Okay, see this uh, chapter chemical kinetics, it's completely mathematical. Okay, you will have a lot of integration to do. Okay, shall we start? Okay. You see, this chapter is all about, again, we have uh, like, uh, chemical reactions only. As far as chemical reaction is concerned, yeah, as far as chemical reaction is concerned, we had already uh, studied two different chapters. Okay. And that is, uh, chemical reaction okay two chapters we have discussed in this and that is thermodynamics already we have studied in 11th grade right and we have also done that is chemical equilibrium what information we get from these two chapters uh, you know for a chemical reaction, as far as this chemical reaction is concerned. What information we get from this two chapter? Thermodynamics and chemical equilibrium. Thermodynamics gives us the idea of feasibility of a reaction, yes or no? It tells us that under a given set of condition, whether the reaction is possible or not. And for that, what is the condition? Yes, tell me, what is the condition? Feasibility of reaction. Under a given set of condition, we can talk about, yes, we can talk about spontaneity, we can talk about delta G. If delta G is less than zero, we can say the reaction is feasible, possible, otherwise it is not possible, non-spontaneous, okay? Chemical equilibrium gives us the idea of direction of reaction. Right, direction of reaction. Like under the condition in which direction the reaction proceeds, right, forward or backward, right? Now suppose we have a reaction, one simple reaction I'll write down, that is carbon, we have certain moles of carbon and we have certain moles of oxygen. These two reacts and it gives uh, carbon dioxide, okay? So if I ask you, suppose the number of moles of CNO2 is given and if I ask you by what time or how much time this reaction will take to finish or completion of this reaction, right? That is what time it requires for the completion of reaction, that is what? That is what the rate at which the reaction is proceeding. Right. We did not talk about the rate of a reaction till now, right? You can say under the, under the given condition, like, okay, it is, it is feasible or not. We can use a concept of thermodynamics and say, you can also say whether it goes in forward direction or backward direction based on all the data. But if I ask you at what speed the reaction is proceeding, right, that is the, rate of the reaction or by what time or after how much time the reaction will get over. This idea we do not have since we did not talk about the rate of the reaction. Okay, so this chapter actually, you know, deals with the rate of a chemical reaction. How do we define the rate of a chemical reaction? So this has two, three different portions for this chapter, three different sections you can say. First, it deals with the rate of the reaction it also deals with the mechanism of the reaction okay remember in organic chemistry we say what is the rate determining step what is the rate determining step so the slowest step. slowest step and how do you know which one is the slowest step that idea you will have from this chapter once you know the rate of the reaction 
correct that's why we say that this chemical kinetics also deals with the mechanism of the reaction which step is the slowest step fastest step everything mechanism of the reaction okay and it also uh, you know deals with the effect of various factors such as concentration pressure temperature catalyst on the reaction rate means reaction rate plus what all factors which affect the rate of the reaction right and the mechanism of reaction got it so all these things we are going to understand in this chapter we are also going to understand the order of the reaction like in um, sn2 sn1 we say you know who is the second order reaction first order reaction all those informations we'll have from this chapter understood okay so write down chemical kinetics deals with the rate of a chemical reaction i'll write down wait deals with the rate of chemical reaction it also deals with deals with the mechanism mechanism of reaction of reaction and and various factor various factor such as such as concentration oh i missed it effect of effect of, of various factor such as concentration temperature pressure pressure catalyst etc on the reaction rate on the reaction rate okay so this chapter actually you know come you know you know completes the understanding for you it's all finished or you know we can say this chapter gives you all the informations of the reaction rate and here the study of a chemical reaction the everything will gets over when you finish this particular chapter okay we'll be understanding we have we have, all, we have already done the feasibility we have all done the reaction direction and this deals with the rate of the reaction so everything of of a chemical reaction will get over now since we are talking about the speed of the reaction so on the basis of the speed of the reaction the reactions are classified into three categories okay so write down on the basis of on the basis of speed of speed the reaction is classified any reaction is classified fight into three categories three categories the first one is we are very fast or we also call it as instantaneous reaction instantaneous reaction right these are the reactions which gets over in like 10 to the power minus 14 to 10 to the power minus 16 seconds means as soon as the reactant comes in contact the reaction gets over 
right? So these are the very fast reaction basically. So all the neutralization reaction, acid-base reactions are the example of it, okay? Examples of this reaction are neutralization reaction. Acid-base reaction, okay? In acid-base reaction, what happens? We have an exchange, we are just ion exchange, right? Na plus OH minus H plus Cl minus converts into NaCl plus water. So it is the exchange of ion, right? Ion exchange reaction. And that's why this reaction, we also call it as ionic reaction, right? So very fast reaction, ionic reaction, or instantaneous reaction, all are the same thing. Right, precipitation reaction is also, uh, you know, comes into this category. Like for example, if you have AgNO3 reacts with NaCl, then AgCl precipitates and will get NaNO3. So all these comes under the same category. Very fast or instantaneous reaction. Second type of reaction we have, are you done? Okay, second type of reaction we have, very slow reaction, just opposite to it. Very slow reaction means what? Corrosion. It takes months, right? These are the very slow reaction. Extremely slow at room temperature, right on very ex extremely slow at room temperature. Right? For example, we have we have rusting of iron. Reaction of O2, H2 and O2 at room temperature. Gives H2O. This is also a similar kind of reaction. C plus O2. Reaction of carbon and oxygen at room temperature. Formation of CO2, extremely slow reaction. Right. Why we are discussing all these things? One type is extremely fast, okay. Right, you won't even get your time, get the time to blink your eyes and the reaction will get over. Right, that is the order of 10 to the power minus 14 and 10 to the power minus 16. And this one is, ex is extremely slow. It takes months, years to finish, right. Uh, that's why these two reactions, we do not, you know, calculate or deals with in this chapter. We don't calculate rate of these reactions because there is no point of calculating rate. Okay, the reaction becomes is extremely slow or extremely fast. So we don't deal with these two kind of reaction in this chapter. We deals with what? We deals with the reaction which has the moderate rate. That is molecular reaction. Or we also call it as moderate reaction. Third type you write down. Moderate reaction. We also call it as molecular reaction. Like in the first one, Ions are involved. Here we have molecules are involved. So molecular reactions proceeds with a moderate speed and we are going to deal with molecular reactions in this chapter mainly. Write on these type of reactions. These type of reactions proceeds with this type of reactions proceeds with the moderate rate at room temperature. Moderate rate at room temperature. Many examples we have. Reaction of N2 plus H2. N2 plus 3H2 gives 2NH3 is a moderate rate reaction. Okay, dissociation of H2O2. 2H2O 
plus O2, right? Uh, growth of bacteria in the milk sample. Growth of bacteria in the milk sample. All these are moderate reactions. So in this chapter, we are going to deal with uh, moderate reactions. Okay. So we are talking about rate of the reaction. So first of all, we'll see what is rate and how do we define the rate of a reaction. Heading right down rate of reaction. See, if you look at the velocity, how do we define velocity? Velocity is the rate of change of displacement or displacement per unit time is velocity. Distance per unit time is speed, right? Point I'm trying to make is whenever this rate term comes, it means we are, we are dealing with per unit time, right? So rate means with respect to time, we have to do the calculation, right? With respect to time. For a chemical reaction, we deals with concentration, right? That's why for a chemical reaction, the rate defines at the rate of change of concentration of either reactant or product per unit time. Are you getting it? Right? So how do we define the rate of anything? Rate is the change in, uh, we can say the term or the change in quantity, for example. In general, we define like this, divided by the time taken to produce that change, okay? Or the time required to produce that change. This is how we define the rate, okay? Write down in chemical reactions, in chemical reactions, the rate is defined as defined as the change in concentration of reactant or product the rate is defined a change in concentration of reactant and product in a given time interval. In a given time interval. Okay, finished. Okay. Now, if I write down this, the expression here of rate is equals to change in the concentration of reactant a square bracket means concentration okay the concentration of reactant or the concentration of product divided by divided by 
the time required. That is delta C concentration by delta T. Right? When the reaction is given in gaseous phase, or I'll write down here when the reaction is in gaseous phase, then instead of uh, this thing, uh, concentration will take what? The pressure. Okay. So rate in this case would be the change in pressure of reactant or product divided by the time required to produce this change. This is how we define the rate of a reaction. Okay. Done. Yeah. So I am taking a simplest example here. Suppose the reaction is we have A and this is converting into a product. Okay. So at time t is equals to zero, we have certain concentration of A that is assuming as A and there's no product at this time. So it is zero. Now, since A is converting into B, so at time t, we have A minus X and this is X. Okay. So rate is what? Rate with respect to A if we define that would be the change in concentration of A, right? Um, the change in concentration of A, concentration of A divided by the time required for this change. And this is equals to, we'll write at time t is equals to zero, the concentration was A, at time t is equals to t, the concentration becomes a minus x. And this is divided by the time required is 0 minus t. Oh, it should be other way, no? t minus 0. This is the time required for this change. So even the numerator will be you know, even the numerator, yeah, that's right. So here also we have a minus x minus a. A minus x minus a. Okay, this is the change in concentration. Now this becomes minus x by t, correct? So rate is coming out to be negative. What do you mean by this? So as we go forward, the reaction becomes slower. But that is not possible because if that is there, then the reaction should not go in the forward direction. This means it is a kind of, you know, in physics we say distillation, right? No, sir, like it will go forward, but at a slower pace. A is decreasing. Huh? This means that A is decreasing. Yes, A is decreasing, 
But negative rate, what do you mean by negative? Does, does, does it have any significance? That the reaction is proceeding, right? A is converting into B with negative rate. What do you mean by this? Sir, so, I mean direction. Not no, setting, like in, in uh, the concentration. If it was easing, then so technically direction. See, direction we can think about, but here we, I'm not assuming that because, you know, rate we can define for any reaction, no? whether it is reversible or irreversible. I'm assuming what A is converting into any product. So if you talk about di direction, then this thing won't be true for irreversible reaction. Okay, but rate we can define for all kinds of reaction, whether it is reversible or irreversible. See, the thing is, since A is converting into B, so we must have, uh, you know, rate positive here, right? Negative rate does not have any significance. You can think of you're going with sudden speed, 10 meter per second, and then again, it's slowing it down. That is a case of distillation, right? There we can say that, you know, you are getting slower with time. Distillation is there, acceleration is there in the opposite direction. But here the thing is not like that. A is converting into B. So here the negative rate does not mean anything. So what we do here, whenever we write, this is the formula we have. Whenever we write the rate with respect to any reactant, we'll consider a negative sign here that we have to introduce. Here also we have to introduce so that the rate becomes eventually positive. So this is equals to negative of change of concentration of A because A is reactant divided by the time because the concentration of A is decreasing, right? To make it positive, we'll just introduce a negative sign here, right? So this is what this is. We are talking about two instant, right? The time when A is A, a has a concentration and the time when A has A minus X concentration. If you plot a graph over here, if you plot a graph over here of concentration and time, this is the concentration axis and this is the time axis. So graph is, suppose it goes like this. Okay, so at time, this will touch y axis, my bad, because at time t we have certain concentration of A, right? So this is the concentration of A, suppose we have. This is the con initial concentration of A at time t is equal to zero. As the reaction starts, the, concentra the concentration of A starts decreasing, and hence this is the graph we have. The concentration of A decreases, and at time t, at time t, the concentration becomes this. This is the concentration at time t. This is the concentration is C naught initially. Okay. So this, uh, you know, difference here, you see, one second. Yeah. So this difference you see from this point to this point, this is the difference in concentration in a given time period, delta C. And this is the time required for, for this change, that is delta T. So this change is what? This is the average rate of the reaction because over a given a period of time, right? Delta T time, what is the change we have? So this rate, we call it as average rate. And if I write down the formula for this, this would be the, one sec. This would be Delta C divided by Delta T, right? Now, if what happens if this Delta T almost tends to zero. If you apply the limit over here, I'll go to the next page just a second, I'll come back. Our average, we have 
and when we apply the limit over here limit delta t tends to zero dc by d delta c by delta t then what do you mean by this term Instantaneous, right? instantaneous right so this is the mathematical derivation uh, sorry definition of dy by dx or dc by dt in this case right so this average when the delta t becomes zero this becomes r instantaneous so instantaneous rate is dc change in concentration by t right so you must have done all these things in physics also uh, in the first chapter only the mechanics uh, you know they have defined this average speed and instantaneous speed right all these things you have done already so this is the average speed over a period of time when this delta t becomes zero so this point you see and this point it is almost you know next to it very close right and when you draw a line to join these two point that line will be the will be the what it will be the tangent of this curve right at this point and slope of the tangent tangent is dy by dx here it is c and t so dc by dt that definition you already have right so r instantaneous is dc by dt and r average defines over a period of time that is delta c by delta t mostly we'll use instantaneous rate for the calculation understood instantaneous rate for the calculation so you see here one second right r instantaneous is r average in this okay so we had this equation a gives zero at sorry a gives a product p at time t is equals to zero it is uh, i'm assuming the concentration as a this is zero at time t is equals to t it was a minus x a minus x and this is x okay so r rate is r average if i write down that would be delta concentration of a by delta t with negative sign okay is equals to dc by dt with also negative sign here instantaneous average so this should not write equals to but we can define both way this dc by dt is nothing but r instantaneous if i write down with respect to the product p here again this you know reaction we can write r average equals to plus of delta of concentration of p by delta t if it is r instantaneous it is minus just a second hello yes so this is the instantaneous and average we have what i have done i have done this product we have no so it is plus sign we have here okay for product it is always positive we'll write down here if i write down the rate with respect to product or rate with respect to reactant we'll consider the negative sign both are the rate of the reaction okay so overall the rate of this reaction we can write rate equals to minus of delta a sorry minus of delta concentration of a by delta t is equals to plus of delta concentration of product p by delta t average 
instantaneous if you write that would be minus of d concentration of a by dt and plus of d concentration of p by dt got it so product will write positive sign uh, it's relative so reactant it is negative so product is positive okay rate of reaction write down rate of reaction one second right on rate of reaction we always define for one mole means whatever the stoichiometry coefficient the expression of rate of constant rate of reaction is always with respect to one mole of reactant or product okay look at this example here uh suppose we have a reaction 2a gives 3b okay so at time t is equals to 0 suppose its concentration is a and this is 0 and at any time t it becomes a minus 2x and what is this 3x correct so if i write down the rate of a a is the reactant it is not the rate of reaction it is the rate of a the reactant rate of a or rate of reactant or we can also write down the rate of consumption rate of uh, consumption or rate of disappearance all these things are same okay consumption disappearance all these things are same is equals to we'll write minus of d concentration of a by dt okay this expression would be d by dt of change in concentration of a is a minus 2x minus x divided by t minus a right not x minus a divided by t and this would be what 2 times dx by dt okay similarly copy this down first i'll go to the next page then rate of b rate of b b is the product so production rate of uh, appearance anything we can write this equals to plus of d by dt of concentration of b which becomes plus of d by dt concentration of b is uh, 3x minus 0 so this would be plus 
dx by dt. Okay. This dx by dt is the rate of the reaction. This is the rate of the reaction per mole. 3 dx by dt is the rate of appearance of D. What is this? It is the rate of reaction. And we'll use this ROR abbreviation for rate of reaction. Okay, ROR. Dx by dt is the rate of reaction. You see, the rate of reaction and rate of appearance of B is thrice of the rate of reaction. If you go back here, the rate of reaction is this, ROR, and rate of appearance, sorry, disappearance of A or consumption of A is twice to that of the rate of the reaction. So if I find out dx by dt from this, what is dx by dt is equals to, you see here, dx by dt is equals to this two expression you see. Uh, I am considering this one, the rate of the reaction. Rate of the reaction and this, this two I am considering. So dx by dt from this is, one by two of minus D concentration of A by DT. So one by two, you can also write minus one by two DA by DT, but I have written it this way because minus D by DA by DT is the rate of appearance of A. That is minus DA by DT. Okay. Similarly, if you write down, uh, the rate of disappearance, this rate of appearance of this is dx by dt. And this dx by dt, if you equate with this, this would be one by three plus of d concentration of b by dt. So plus db by dt is the rate of appearance of this and minus da by dt is the rate of disappearance of a. When you equate the two, you will get the expression for the rate of the reaction and that would be dx by dt is equals to 1 by 2 negative of d concentration of a by dt is equals to 1 by 3 positive of d concentration of b by dt. Okay. So this is the rate of uh, you know, reaction we have. dx by dt is the rate of the reaction. Then two notes you write down here. Write down rate of any reactant or product rate of any reactant or product is independent of its rate of any reactant or product is independent of its stoichiometric coefficient Okay. 
rate of any particular species or any reactant or product is independent of its stoichiometric coefficient. Second point, rate of reaction, rate of reaction can be find, can be find out only when the chemical reaction is given, only when right on balanced chemical reaction is given. It of reaction can be find out only when the balanced chemical reaction is given. Since it depends upon the stoichiometric coefficient. Since it depends upon stoichiometric coefficient. Okay. So keep that in mind for any individual species, for any reactant or product, rate can be defined easily. You just need the concentration or pressure at two different points. Okay. If the reaction is not given, fine, you can find out the rate of individual species that is of any reactant or product. But if you need to find out the rate of reaction, which is this dx by dt, rate of reaction, then you must know what is the balanced uh, reaction. What is the stoichiometric coefficient we have here? If the balanced chemical reaction is not given, then the rate of reaction we cannot find out. We can find out the rate of individual species, but not the rate of the reaction. Yes, understood? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so if you have any reaction, for example, you see, we have a reaction AA, BB, the rate expression for this reaction is, the rate of the reaction is equals to, we can write dx by dt, which is equals to one by A minus of D concentration of A by DT one by B minus D concentration of B by DT one by C plus of D concentration of C by DT one by D sorry 1 by D plus of D concentration of D by DT. Okay. So this we can write with respect to any reactant or product. Understood? Always keep that in mind. We always write uh, the reactant. Whenever you are taking, you must take the negative sign here. For a product, we'll take the positive sign. Okay. One more definition, the last thing today we'll see. We'll discuss one question on this. Okay, next class we'll discuss. Just remind me, okay, we have to do one question on reaction rate, okay? It will take some time, that's why I'm not giving you now. 
Okay, one question, one, uh, see, one uh, term just we need, which is we define over here. Write down reaction lifetime. Okay, write down. It is a time required. It is a time required to proceed 98% of the completion of reaction. Right? So if you look at this relation here, more reaction rate lesser will be the reaction lifetime, okay? So we can write the reaction lifetime, lifetime is inversely proportional to the reaction rate. So, yes. So why is it 98%? Yes, 98%, so we'll have a reason for this. Uh, actually, none of the reaction goes till 100% of completion. Uh, we'll have a mathematical equation for this. You will understand this in the next class properly. Okay, but uh, if you ask me this question, I also ask you one question. I have drawn this graph, correct? And none of you okay. why not? I got it. It'll be, an, it'll be tending to zero, but never zero. Yes. So the point is, for most of the reaction, the concentration is decreasing with time okay so when it becomes to almost 98 percent of completion the reaction becomes extremely slow and we assume that okay the reaction is over okay that's why the 98 percent given in the book okay it depends upon the order of the reaction also okay so except one particular order for all the order of the reaction the reaction never goes to 100% completion. Okay, if I give you one small uh, information here, rate expression, we can write K times into the concentration to the power N, where N is the order of the reaction. You know this relation, right? Yes? You know, you haven't done this chapter in the school? No, sir. No, we haven't done it in school. But... Fine. Anyways, so you just assume for a second that this is the rate expression we have for A gives P the product we have. So rate we can write down in that form one by that into D of A by DT and all. We can also define rate by this. That is the law of mass action. We'll see that next class. Okay. Now you see N is the order of the reaction here. Okay. If this N is zero, then what happens? If this so N is zero, constant. rate is independent of? Rate is independent of? Concentration. Concentration. Yes. So in that case, whatever the concentration is, rate has nothing to do with that. It keeps on going with the same rate and only zero order reaction goes to 100% completion. If it is any other value, one, two or something like that, any other value, if it is, then rate is a function of concentration and concentration decreases with time. It can be a straight line like this. It can be a curve. What would be the graph that we'll see, that we'll understand when we understand the order of the reaction. Okay. But yes, rate is a function of concentration. It decreases with time. So at 98% of the completion, the rate becomes extremely slow and we assume that the reaction is over. That's why the 98% we have there. Clear? Yes. Yes, sir. So next class, you just remind me, we have to do a question on the rate of reaction. Okay? Remind me that. And then we'll see the other things in this chapter. Fine. Okay. Thank you, guys. None for today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.